Greetings, gun enthusiasts. Today I wanted to talk about the Caliber Wars because it looks like a lot of fun. I'm an expert in... Um, I know you don't know this about me. Um, I, I test a lot of miniature guns. I'm an expert, actually, in, in the larger calibers. I know... Um, I know enough to speak authoritatively about 45 ACP, 40 Smith and Wesson, nine uh, millimeter, uh, 357 Magnum, and the reason I know all of those calibers as well as I do is because I don't own any of them, and some of them I've never even fired. So that makes me an expert on those calibers. I just want to make that clear up front. I, I learned this by watching a YouTuber um, present a Caliber Wars argument, uh, despite the fact that he doesn't own one of the Calibers that he spent a great deal of time dissing on in his presentation. This is a guy with hundreds of thousands of, of, uh, of subscribers, by the way. Literally. So I'm going to hold myself to that same standard, and say, because I don't own currently any of the calibers involved in the caliber wars, I'm an expert on all of those calibers. So I, I can diss on all those calibers by virtue of the fact that I don't know them. All right. First one I want to talk about is good old 357 Magnum. 357 Magnum was abandoned years ago. By law enforcement, by most of your law enforcement agencies, certainly by the FBI, because of course the 357 Magnum is a revolver, and revolvers are notoriously weak in one area: capacity. If you are an FBI agent and you need to fire dozens of rounds downrange in order to connect once or twice with a perpetrator, with a bad guy then you obviously are going to have to reload that 357 Magnum many, 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 many times. Also, if you're in spray and pray mode, you don't necessarily want to use a round as powerful as a 357 Magnum because those are going to go a long ways and still carry deadly force. They're going to be coming down in neighboring counties and taking people out potentially if, they, if, if by random coincidence you happen to hit one. Um, so you don't want to use 357 Magnum if you're law enforcement or FBI. So 357 is ruled out. Also, um, I just want to drop in on Lucky Gunner Labs here temporarily and take a look at some of the performance that you get from 357 Magnum and talk about over penetration. Because 357 Magnum, the second thing that's wrong with 357 Magnum, uh, other than capacity, is penetration depth. You get a lot of over penetration with 357 Mag. Even okay, let's let's ignore these first half a dozen bullet types that didn't properly expand. Here, oh, here's a couple that did actually expand, but still went over you know over 20 inches, two feet on average. Um, let's start here with the properly expanding Barnes 140 grain XPB Vortex out of a four inch barrel. Those will generally punch 20 inches through gel and expand to 0.62. And of course, that's because of 357's ridiculously high muzzle velocities. It's 1352. Look at the muzzle velocity on this one 1640 out of a standard four inch service revolver. Uh, what are you going to do with 1600 feet per second? You're not hunting elephants. Um, it, there's, that's, there's no need for that. That's just ridiculous. And of course, you can bring that. You can bring that down. You can underload a 357 Magnum. But uh, and, and you can get you know you can get them down in the range where they're 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 coming in under 18 inches. They're they're meeting the FBI spec uh, and expanding you know to 1.5 times their initial bullet diameter. But they're still coming out the barrel with like 1,400, 1,290, you know, 1,100 out of a two-inch barrel. Here's one that's 1,425 feet per second out of a two-inch barrel. It's another one, 1,169 out of a little snub nose. Are you kidding me? There's no way you're going to be able to control the recoil on that. And it doesn't really matter because you only have six or seven shots, maybe five shots in a two-inch barrel, you know, a little J-frame. 
And, and so you don't really want to make rapid follow-up shots anyway. You want to take your time and aim. And that's something the FBI just isn't into. I'm sorry. They're not going to take their time and aim. So they have no use for a powerful bullet like this. So we're going to dismiss 357 out of hand. And we're going to move on to more of the standard caliber um, caliber wars calibers. And that being 45 ACP, 40 Smith & Wesson, and 9mm Luger. I am going to look first at the 45 ACP because that is the standard by which all other pistols shall be judged. Again, I know this because of my expertise. Remember, I've never owned a 45 ACP. I can't remember offhand if I've ever even fired one. Actually, no. I believe I did fire one once. Maybe twice. It's not terribly memorable. And that's one of the good things about 45 ACP. If you've ever fired a 357 Magnum with a full house 357 Magnum cartridge in it, you remember that. But 45 ACP, meh. You know, the recoil, the felt recoil on 45 ACP, is just not that bad. Now, with 45 ACP, you can also have overpenetration issues, despite the initial bullet diameter being, well, 45 caliber. You can have failures to expand properly, and those bullets will overpenetrate because despite the low recoil, despite the relatively weak muzzle velocity, you know, there's some 767, 805, 871, those are typical muzzle velocities, those bullets are likely to fail in a heavy cloth, a heavy denim uh, barrier test. You want to get those velocities up a little bit. Here's a nice 200 grain Horn DXTP plus P that's averaging 18 inches, expanding to 0.59 diameter, 965 feet per second at the muzzle. That, that tells you why that one's expanding reliably. But here's the thing. 0.59 inch diameter is not sufficient expansion according to the experts once again your bullet according to the experts needs to expand to 1.5 times its initial bullet diameter so 0 0.59 where whereas that would be acceptable performance from a nine millimeter is not acceptable performance from a 45 acp acceptable performance from a 45 acp starts at 0.675 inches in diameter so let's order these according to their expansion and go down to that 0.675 line here's here's one that expands to 0.65 but that's not quite acceptable and that one didn't always expand anyway if you look at the uh Look at the bullet expansion there. They had a couple of failures. So let's move up from that one to the next one. Here's one at 0.70. This is a spear gold dot, 230 grain standard pressure bullet. And if you're a 45 guy, you know your 45 may not be plus P rated. This bullet is standard pressure. It only comes out the muzzle at 800 feet per second, 806 in this average. And that will not have a lot of felt recoil. It will not be a snappy recoil. It will be more of a push, more of an impulse than, than, than it will be um, a snappy, explosive recoil. Still got a lot of power, you know, to drive a 230 grain bullet, 800 feet per second. You're going to get good results. 14 inch average penetration, 0 0.70 average expansion diameter. Let's start with that round, since we've ordered them according to expansion. This is the first round that passes the 1.5 diameter, 1.5 times initial bullet diameter expansion threshold. So let's count how many different rounds of 45 ACP pass this portion of the test. And we'll throw out any rounds, like the Federal 165 grain guard, guard dog here, that do not pass the penetration portion of the F FBI specs and, and, and fall outside that 12 to 18 inch magic window. Okay, starting down here with the 230 grain gold dot standard pressure, you have one, two, 
three. That, that, that bullet didn't, it doesn't quite get there, does it? That's <laughs> uh, it, it's it's pretty close. The average is twelve point nine. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna let this one slide, even though one of the bullets didn't quite make it to twelve inches. Let, let's, let's see see where are we at now. One, two, three, four. Five, yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, there's a there's an expansion failure. I'm gonna throw out any any test where the five shots uh, uh, reveal an expansion failure. A failure rate of twenty percent is unacceptable in my book, and maybe they should do a couple of five shot tests. Ten rounds would be, you know, more telling. But whatever, this this round had an expansion failure, so we'll throw it out for the moment. Um, and this round two had an expansion failure, so we'll throw that out. So what are we what are we at here? Starting at point seven zero, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine different rounds. And this this one. You got this little over penetration here that's probably related to that expansion failure. So nine different rounds where all the shots come in in that 12 to 18 inch window or really close. This one, I'm going to let that squeak by. There's nine different rounds of 45 ACP that have been tested by Lucky Gunner. And these are, you know, these are your Winchester, your Federal, your Remington, your Spear Gold Dot, stuff that's readily available. It's going to be on the shelf. You're going to be able to find it. Nine different rounds of 45 ACP that produce that FBI standard 1.5 times diameter expansion and uh, 12 to 18 inch standard penetration and uh, have reliable, consistent expansion even through a heavy cloth barrier. Now I'm going to go up to 40 Smith & Wesson next. For 40 Smith & Wesson, unlike 45 ACP, 1.5 times expansion diameter is only 0 0.60. So starting way down here at 0 0.60, what's that you say? That's not fair. I'm holding 40 Smith & Wesson to a lower standard than I held 45 ACP. You know what? You're right. I'm not going to start counting here to see how many 40 Smith & Wesson rounds pass the past the 1.5 diameter expansion and meet the 12 to 18 inch window. I'm going to actually start way up at 0.675. Look at all these lovely rounds that drop out at 0.65, at 0.64, at 0.67, because we want to go 0.675. The first one that passes is 0.68. That has an expansion failure, doesn't it? One of those rounds did not expand in the heavy cloth barrier test. The second one up here fails diameter, fails penetration. Look at that. 11.9 inches average. Some of these look like they went like 10 and a half inches. Federal 155 grain tactical bonded. That's not acceptable. Happily then, we'll start the count at this first 0 0.70 inch final bullet diameter. That's a Winchester 180 grain Ranger T series bullet. Average is 16 inches five shot penetration depth, all five expanded nicely, and they meet that 0 0.70 inch expansion threshold that we held 45 ACP to. Starting with this one and throwing out any bullets that have expansion failures or over penetration or under penetration, and we can we got a little bit of wiggle room especially on over penetration because honestly, so long as your bullets are expanding, if they over penetrate inch or two, that's that's actually acceptable. The real problem is with misses. And if you're in spray and pray mode, like the FBI apparently likes to be in because they love nine millimeter and they've got to have that capacity, um, you're, you're going to miss uh, apparently quite a lot more than you're going to over penetrate your target. So here's, uh, here's one that passes. Here's another one that passes, a nice Winchester 180 grains. Another one that passes. There's three. And we come to the federal HSTs. You, you got a little bit of over penetration, but I mean, all those bullets are expanding beautifully. Um, I think I'm going to accept that. 
So let's go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There, that one barely reaches the 12 inch threshold. So here's, a, here's, a, here's a copper solid bullet, um, but it's got great expansion over three quarters of an inch. So, um, you know, this is bigger than the, uh, than the biggest of the 357s. So it stopped at 0.75 for the 357s. And, the, and, and that was also a copper solid Barnes, I believe. Um, so this is number 9, 10, 11, again, barely 12 inches on the shortest bullet there, 12, 13, 13 different kinds of, of, of rounds, of bullets, of, of brands of 40 Smith & Wesson past the FBI specifications, 13 compared with 9 for the 45 ACP. We're holding these to the same standard as the 45 ACP, 0 0.70 inches expansion diameter, 12 to 18 inch window. 13 of them, huh? And you know a little secret? If you go behind the scenes and look at the foot pounds of muzzle energy, you find these are actually comparable to 45 ACP. Even some of these will be comparable to 45 ACP plus P. Yep, 40 Smith & Wesson isn't 40 short and weak. It's 40, the same power as 45, but with way more capacity. That's the secret. That's the reason law enforcement turned to 40 Smith & Wesson for 25 years. Capacity. It shoots the same as 45 ACP, really the same as 45 plus P. Most of those 45 rounds that passed are plus P rounds, not necessarily suitable in your particular 45 pistol. 45 Smith and, 40 Smith and Wesson doesn't have a plus P designation. That was 10 millimeter. That was the problem. Too much power. These are all standard pressure rounds. 13 of them. Again, we're talking Remington, Winchester, Federal, Barnes, you know, a, a, a little bit of a specialty loader, but Federal uses their their rounds. You know, Federal, Federal loads Barnes rounds. You can get a hold of many of these 13 rounds at your local gun shop. These are readily available bullets that Lucky Gunner has tested. 13 different types pass FBI specs to the same level that 45 will pass the FBI specs. That is expansion to 0 0.70 inch diameter and penetration to 12 to 18 inches through a heavy cloth barrier. Now let's look. Caliber wars aren't done yet. We've looked at 357, we've looked at 45 ACP, we've looked at 40 Smith & Wesson, and now we're going to look at 9mm. This is the bullet that, for a quarter of a century, was thrown out of the caliber wars. This bullet basically was resurrected by you and me. This bullet was not resurrected by the FBI. This bullet was resurrected by concealed carry civilians. We demanded better 9mm engineering, and the ammo manufacturers listened. We are the reason the 9mm Luger is back in contention with the big boys. 9mm of today, especially in plus P, is a lot better than 9mm was a quarter century ago when the FBI threw it out. FBI let, has let 9mm back in. You are welcome, FBI. Now your little pencil pushers can carry around. That's a lot easier to fire than the 45 ACP, or than the 45 ACP, than the 40 Smith & Wesson. You can get back on target quicker. And it's all because of us, the civilian carry community, and our demands that the ammo manufacturers make better ammo. So you're welcome. Now let's hold 9mm to the same standard as we held 45 ACP, shall we? Let's start not with... 0.54 inch expanded diameter, but with 0 0.70, 0 0.675, right? 
Here we are, 0.69, good enough. Those bullets are fine. They're expanding beautifully. They're penetrating to the 12 to 18 inch window. Look at those luscious copper solids. I like those. PNW Arms 115 grain TAC Ops SCHB. Maybe not something that's going to be on the shelf of your local gun club, but I bet the Corbon 115 grain DPX is, and they work just fine. 1100 feet per second muzzle velocity, almost 14 inches average penetration, and they expand to 0 0.690. So there's a couple of different rounds. It's basically the same bullet, but two different ways to load it. Barnes, a similar bullet, you know, similar velocities, similar penetration. Again, beautiful, the way those copper solid petals roll back and make beautiful symmetrical blossoms. 0 0.70 inch diameter. So there's three different rounds. And here's two that kind of over penetrate a little bit. Federal 150 grain micro HST. But these are shot out of a three and a half inch barrel. And maybe you're shooting, a, maybe you're running a 3.1 in your concealed carry piece. And so you're not so concerned. It's not gonna, it's not gonna achieve quite this muzzle velocity and maybe it won't over penetrate. So let's keep these two in. After all, I think we kept in uh, one or two of the 40, you know, 40 Smith and Wessons that, that went just over 18 inches too, but exhibited proper expansion. Actually, I believe one of those was a, was a federal HST. So let's keep these. That makes a grand total of five. Five nine millimeter rounds pass the FBI specifications to the same degree as the 40 and the 45. 13 different types of 40 Smith & Wesson expand to 0 0.70 inches or greater and fall within the 8, 12 to 18 inch window. Nine different types of 45 fall within the 18, 12 to 18 inch window and expand to 0.70 inch or greater. And five. Lucky Gunner tested a lot more 9mm than they tested 45 and 40. So you can't claim it's because they didn't test your favorite round. They did. Probably. Look at all that. Okay. Five of them expand as big as a 45 or a 40 and penetrate uh, as deep. Whatever your position on the caliber wars, whatever your personal caliber is, don't let your personal preferences get in the way of acknowledging honestly the difference between 9mm and 40 or 45. Because 40 and 45 are the same power. It, 45 ACP plus P bullets are the same power as 40 Smith & Wesson bullets. Generally speaking, every company loads them a little bit differently. Uh, the, the big, the boutique loaders, the Underwoods, the, the Buffalo Boars will load these to about the same muzzle energy. Even though they're a different size bullet, they'll load 45 ACP plus P and 40 Smith & Wesson to around 600 or 580 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. That's way more than they'll load nine millimeter plus P and it's very close to the same power as each other, 40 and, and, and 45, uh, 45 plus P. Nine millimeter, not the same. Please do not confuse the FBI's adoption of nine millimeter as acceptable as being the same lethality as 40 or 45. All right. That is all I wanted to do. And I had fun. I hope you did too. Geographies are out.